Arsch geht's. Look, I know all of you are only here for the edgy cartoon memes. I know you're frustrated it's been like six months since the last one, and you certainly didn't sign up for vlogging bullshit. But I might have some good news. YouTube has made it impossible to carry on making cartoons on YouTube. But what if we could talk somebody into paying for a cartoon series? After four years of animating, there's about 47 minutes total of Flash Kids cartoons on this channel. With a Flash Kids show, we'd get to make between 120 to 210 minutes of Flash Kids cartoons every year per season. Now, you probably think a couple of YouTube douchebags landing a real cartoon series seems pretty far-fetched. You aren't wrong to be skeptical, but at this point, we're a lot closer than you may think. This is our show quest. On this special 10th episode of Show Quest, we'll be going over exactly where the story is now after all the votes and adjustments we've made up till now. This is a recap of our show idea so far. Fist or Fight Street or Pavement Tussle, we really haven't settled on a name yet, is a show about an ordinary man made entirely of Y chromosomes and his quest to punch world peace into the frontal lobes of his enemies. That ordinary man's name? Albert Einstein? No, it's Stan. His, his name's Stan. Or is it? You see, Stan's birth name was actually Fist. Named so because his father, Inke Furururu, is probably the most dangerous martial artist in the world and he expected his son to follow in his footsteps. But no matter how much child abuse Fururu heaped on him, he couldn't seem to make the cycle of violence stick, and Fist rejected the street fighting world. Fist changed his name to Stan, secured a safe office job, and started a beautiful family. He even tried to remove his fighting gloves, but couldn't as they'd been permanently punched onto him by his father when he was a child. Much like the old man himself, Fudududu's legacy could not be so easily cast aside. In a twist of irony, and bad writing, Stan's son, Masuko, would end up rejecting Stan's peaceful ways. The boy was in love with the idea of street fighting, the cool moves, the sweet combos, the dope outfits. He begged Stan to let him watch one of Fururu's fights. It was Masuko's eighth birthday, and in a moment of weakness, Stan relented and agreed. Maybe seeing the ugliness of street fighting firsthand would end the boy's fascination with it. And it kinda did, because during the fight, one of Fudududu's stray fireballs ended up hitting Masuko, killing him outright. Now if you think Fudududu was sorry about killing his grandson, you haven't been paying attention. He scoffed and blamed Stan for raising such a weak child. Grandfather's like to the main character like, Your boy was weak. You didn't train him like I said. It's like this eight-year-old kid. <laughs> Shortly after that, Fururu disappeared, but the damage was done. Something inside Stan had broken. Ripping the sleeves from his office attire, he fashioned himself a gi. He couldn't run from street fighting any longer. It destroyed his life. He had to confront it and end it. So he sets out on a journey to beat the sh** out of anyone that street fights in such a devastating manner that everyone else will be too afraid to fight anymore, lest he comes for them too. Kinda like Batman or Frank Castle, but like 20 times cooler. And at the very top of Stan's sh** list, Inke Fududu, obviously. His own father. What better victim to send his grand message to the world's other would-be fighters than the greatest fighter alive? There's just one problem. Nobody knows where Fududu is. You see, Fururu isn't satisfied with being the greatest fighter alive. There's still one entity over which he has yet to prove himself. God. So he's traveling between dimensions, killing and collecting the heads of great warriors to build himself a magical tower of skulls to heaven so he can hurricane kick God in the face. Pretty cool. In his absence, Fududu has left his multi-billion dollar window wiper company in the care of his new wife, BG. But BG also wants his company to herself, so she's more than happy to help her son-in-law, Stan, track down his father and kill him. She's also enlisted the help of her daughter, Shemeta, a psychopath with a rocket launcher. Meanwhile, Stan tracks his father in his own way. Having become basically homeless himself, Stan befriends another homeless man, Scratch, who follows him around and patches him up between fights. The two travel from country to country, beating people up and picking up clues. Just like I heard about this fighter in Calcutta. 
You think it could be him? Yes, Scratch. That's not what Scratch sounds like. <laughs> you, you think, think it, it could, could be him? <laughs> yes, yeah, Scratch, I do. But Scratch is also there for a darker purpose. When Stan thinks his quest to end street fighting is complete, he wants to die. Because at that point, he'll have become the biggest perpetrator of street fighting to have ever lived. And the moment Stan feels the deed is done, Scratch is supposed to shoot him with a pistol. Scratch also has his own demons to face down. He's haunted by a malevolent force. Homelessness personified. And nobody believes homelessness is a real fighter beating Scratch up, because nobody else has ever seen him. So Scratch observes Stan fight, secretly learning to fight himself, so he can one day beat up homelessness and ward homelessness off for good. So the two travel the world over, tracking Fudududu, beating up weird, colorful characters, and occasionally crossing paths with Stan's in-laws. At some point, Fudududu becomes aware that Stan finally picked up the mantle of street fighting, and he finds new and creative ways to torment Stan, pushing him to become stronger and stronger, like collecting Stan's DNA with one of his company's sexy car wash androids. She finds a way into his heart, but it's because she was programmed to. Oh no. And then they f or something, and then... Sample collected. Yeah, and now, <laughs> and now suddenly the dad is like clones of his son. He just makes them like stand in the woods, like near wherever the guy's camping, look at him from the woods. Daddy, <laughs> why did you let me die, daddy? <laughs> but one day, one way or another, Stan will persevere over his father. However, by then, Stan will find himself too far gone to be redeemable. Maybe it was all the emotional abuse. Maybe the belt around his skull had been fastened there for too long, too tight. At the end of his life, Stan will realize he hadn't been fighting to make the world better, but to make himself feel better. It just seems like a revelation you'd see coming. He should f***ing turn on his head with like, and you know what? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really want this show to have like an anti-message. <laughs> You know, you know what? And that's all right. It's okay to hurt people to feel better. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, Scratch is left to learn the story's true meaning. He'll have been the show's sleeper protagonist all along, always there with his own struggles, but largely ignored. But what great epiphany will Scratch have? What will he have learned by the end? We'll figure it out next time. We'll be back with more show quests and more progress really soon. Make sure you're set up to receive a special notification whenever we post, since God knows YouTube won't send you a notification anymore just for being a subscriber. We'll also be live streaming the creation of new show quest characters all week on our Twitch, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, starting tonight at 5 EST. Link in the description. We'll see you guys there.